Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're going to be taking on a 164 player repair the shelter by ourselves and I'm going to show you guys how I do this type of mission. And yeah, before I continue with the video, just shout out to anyone using my supported creator code, it really means a lot. You guys have been killing it with the, with the support recently and I, I seriously cannot be any more thankful <laughs> and stuff. And uh, yeah, so code stockings by the way, if you want to support me, use code stockings. It, it'll be in the description, same as my channel name as well. And if you want to join my Discord server, feel free to. There will be an, an invite link in the description that you can click on to to join my server where you can talk to me personally or talk to a bunch of other people that are already in the server and squad up with them and stuff like that. So yeah. Uh, anyways, that's it for the plugs and I'll go with the video on right now. So this is the loadout that I'll be using. It's pretty much like the same loadout that I always use. And uh, by the time I actually upload this video, it should be on a Tuesday. And on and Monday's video should be a evacuate the shelter. I'm recording all this on Sunday. So, uh, yeah, so that should be an evac, and I'm, I'm pretty much using the exact same loadout that I use in, in that evac mission, except we're using something different with Happy Holidays, and I'll get into that later, so yeah, but before anything else, base Kyle, you guys know what he does, really good constructor, probably one of the best ones in the game, if not the best one, increasing building health by 84% is so strong, but here we have Happy Holidays, and the reason why Happy Holidays is so good is because it reduces our ability cooldowns by 40%, and this is actually something that I was informed about by a commenter on one of my other videos, where we can actually use Bull Rush on the constructors here, uh, or, or, you know, Bull Rush. M most of them should have it, if not all of them. I'm pretty sure, well, yeah, most of them should have Bull Rush. Kyle does. So, uh, and, and what this should do, this this should be better against the mini boss, because normally in these in these 140, 160, four players, right, the, the mini boss is pretty much nigh unkillable unless it's they're either trap vulnerable or they're a smasher, where you can just use the discharger on them. And but but if it's a husk mini boss or a husky mini boss, they're pretty much almost unkillable, right? It's kind of and they just kind of become a, a giant nuisance. And the best way to actually deal with them is by using bull rush over and over again. But bull rush normally has a 15 second cooldown, but with happy holidays, we bring that down to a nine second cooldown. That's that's actually such a big decrease in cooldown. So yeah, and that, that probably this, this is gonna be my, my, my first time using it. So and I'm probably gonna like it. So yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, for support team, we got mega base. Make our base a little bigger. He's actually really good for like the, the shelter missions because normally the base covers the entire shelter, right? But Mega Base al allows us to get that extra bit of connectivity where uh, it w we can have like an extra floor that, that gets based up by the you know by the base. So yeah, that's nice. Uh, power modulation here with Power Base Knox, just giving us some self repair in our, in our structures. Pretty good. I like them a lot, uh, especially because I believe the, the the mission that we're going to has um, exploding death bomb. But yeah, uh, demolition is Penny right here. She increases our launcher damage. This, this is stuff like our Pop Shots, our Storm King's Wrath, our Discharger, all the OP weapons that everyone loves, she buffs, so yeah, she's awesome. Um, uh, Ward and Kyle here as well to, uh, to give us some self-healing on our on our base, uh, you know, throughout the mission. Just some nice passive healing over time, really nice. Also giving us some energy uh, uh, cooldown, uh, or, or some, some energy uh, regeneration, right, throughout the mission as well. Because, yeah, I mean, like, we do have Happy Holidays, right, so... I guess we, I guess we are more inclined to use stuff like Bull Rush and Plant Pulse, so probably we'll be spamming a bit of those a bit more throughout the mission. And Bomb Squad Kyle's to give us some armor. 22 armor just uh, it, it translates to 18% damage reduction throughout the entire mission, so yeah, he's nice. And gadget same as always, Banner Slow Field, Banner to make our structures a bit more tankier and to heal them over time. And Slow Field, it's good for the mini boss or to slow down a nice choke point that the, all the husks are coming through. So yeah, that for, that's it for the build, and I'll hop into the mission and show you guys how we do this one. All right, so I'm in the mission, and you just kind of just walk towards the shelter. Uh, it shows you where, where to walk towards it and stuff. So, yeah, we got a decent spawn as well. We got a nice little corner spawn. The corner spawns are pretty nice because usually it's only two angles that I got to go to worry about. We only got to worry about like this angle over here, this angle over there, right? <clears throat> but yeah, uh, normally if you were in a group, right, then you would just you know start the mission automatically. And so, oh, and I'll, I'm actually just gonna kill these guys real quick. All right, took care of those guys and. Uh, I went over this in my evac mission as well because it was also a, a, a nice storm with metal corrosion. I still build with metal in this type of mission, right? Because um, the ideology behind it is that tier three metal or, or I'm sorry, tier three wood is just not enough. It's just not enough hit points. I did a comparison actually off camera, and the comparison of tier three wood versus metal is that tier three wood is pretty much like almost the same as. Uh, Tier two metal, right? And tier two metal just isn't going to cut it in these, in these, especially in a 160 zone, right? Because uh, you definitely want, so you definitely want the highest amount of hit points on on your structures, right? And the thing about metal corrosion is that it only triggers on, on um, 
it only triggers when a basic husk hits the structure. So, so for example, like if we got another batch of bogies right here. So for example, if, if the sploders right were hitting the metal, then metal corrosion wouldn't trigger. But if, if if these regular guys in front of me, like like late these dudes right here, if they were to hit it, then yeah, it would trigger it, right? And or if the pitchers over there would be hitting it, then yeah, it, uh, they, they also wouldn't trigger the metal corrosion. But because this is uh, yeah, and, and because of that, then I just find metal to be better, especially because the, the, the metal is also like really important to deal with, you know, the sploders and smashers. Because uh, in repair the shelter, you get a certain amount of waves that that spawn. You get the there's a wave where it's like entirely like lobbers and flingers. You just get like a bunch of lobbers and flingers off the mission. There's a waves where it's like it's a bunch of propane huskies and and some and a bunch of nurses. And then you got waves when yeah uh, you got like you, you got like ride huskies and like and like just the regular huskies with, with like some smashers sprinkled in there as well. Or there's even like a wave where it's a pretty easy wave where it's just a bunch of blasters and sappers. Right, it's really not it's not that hard at all <clears throat> and stuff. So yeah, just keep that in mind. Uh, those are like the different types of waves that I've seen in Repair the Shelter. And also the density of the husks that spawn in Repair the Shelter are much, much lower than ones that I've uh, seen as well. Now, uh, there's actually a build that I wanted to showcase, right, where it was more revolved around funneling the husks into uh, one tile. Like, I, I think I, I showed it off in my in my EVAC mission, where I pretty much built block offs like right here, <clears throat> and like, you know, areas right here, right? So that they would all get funneled into this area, right? And honestly, I kind of want to mimic that. And if I'm being honest, <laughs> yeah, I actually do want to mimic that, right? And uh, yeah, so we're going to do something like this, with like that, and then something like this, with like that. Just, just follow my edits, like so. And this should funnel all the husks into here. And uh, honestly, the tier 3 these corner ones were kind of, kind of been a waste of metal, if I'm being honest. That's actually... That idea just came into my head right now. I just kind of autopiloted it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so this that's something that I've been trying out. Because that's actually something that I saw from a different content creator. Uh, I don't know if they make content anymore. They haven't uploaded in quite a bit. Like, am I recording? Okay, I'm cool. Yeah, so they haven't uploaded in quite a bit. The name is Digidata. And I saw them actually do a build like this. And hold on, let me take care of these guys. So yeah, like as I was saying, is, um, I saw them from a different content creator called Digidata and stuff. And... Uh, he hasn't uploaded in, in, in quite a minute, but uh, I did see a Repair the Shelter video of, of him uh, doing a build like this, right? And it worked out pretty well. So uh, it was definitely an, an older video that was kind of like a year or two years old now at this point. But I still want to see if it can if it can work in modern day Fortnite Save the World. So yeah, this is like a, a nice little journey for not only you as a viewer, but also for me as a player, which is nice. Uh, put a block up here. Yeah, so, okay, so... I. I'm I'm just putting some more block ups here because I don't want them to actually come to this area. If I'm being honest, I yeah. So I mean, if, if this if this shelter was like in like the middle of the map, like over there, then yeah, this would make a lot of sense. I just kind of put these here just to like not make them go for this one. So re realistically, I didn't really have to upgrade this side here or this side here. I could have just upgraded and spent a lot less metal if I just upgrading like one wall here and then putting just like tier one metal all around here and stuff and like you know. Yeah, I could have saved on a lot of metal, but I kind of just autopilot it until the very last minute, but that's okay. And yeah, to, to make it a bit better, I'll even put one, another one like right here, like so, perfect. And then we're much going to be upgrading this center area right here, like so. I think what he did is that he actually did like this, and then he put wall darts there, but I actually don't think that's, that's necessary. I, I, I've tried this build out before with just broadsides here, and it worked just fine. Uh, but yeah, so... Really cheap, really effective. Uh, once again, I probably don't have to put metal here, or oh no, yeah, I, I probably don't have to put buildings here, but I'm still doing it. And then, oh yeah, the roof also super important that you also upgrade all this. The hopefully I have enough metal. Yeah, a three times nine. Uh, that should be twenty seven. I, I I yeah, I should have enough metal to upgrade all this. So yeah. Uh. But yeah, the stuff like this happens, right? Where it's actually sometimes the husks, regardless, is that they still trying to. They still sometimes attack the, the corners, right? In in his video, what I saw, they didn't, they really weren't attacking the corners. But once again, that was like two years ago when I don't know what Epic Games does with the AI of the husks as the years go on and stuff. And whenever I've tried doing a build like this, I always get husks that attack the corners, and it kind of messes up my my groove, if I'm being honest. Because especially in a mission like this where it's, where it's metal corrosion, it actually matters a lot because you know. If they corrode the walls here, then they're going to they're go for the walls inside. But anyways, so uh, make sure that I upgrade all this. And perfect. 
So what I'm doing here is just putting broadsides like this and kill a uh, husk that just wants to be rude. So yeah, broadsides like this, a tar pit like this, and a wall launcher like this. And for some safe measure, we can even put a tire trap like this. I don't think the tire trap is necessary if I'm being honest, but I'm still going to put it regardless. So yeah, upgrade all this, upgrade all this with broadsides like this, tar pit like this, wall launcher, and tire trap. Uh, tire trap. Uh, I have two tire traps. Uh, the, the, this tire trap here is is for more like exploding death bomb missions, so that they actually minimize the amount of damage that the husks, or yeah, that, that it does to the husks and stuff, um, and stuff. But this one here is kind of like my, my general use one, where I actually do use it for damage, but it's also good at stalling because it has a at least one reload perk and one durability perk, right? So I'm actually gonna use this one here instead of my other triple durability double reload ones. So yeah, something like this, like that, and yeah, this this should honestly be like the whole build. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, wait, one thing that is imperative that you always never forget is air defense. Because like I said, one of the waves that you are going to be getting is going to be filled with uh, flingers and lobbers, so we just want to account for all that, right? The tar pits are good for the huskies and the, and the smashers if you get that wave, right? And the broadside should just kill anything that walks in here that, that isn't a smasher, right? And the wall launcher is used to, to boop the, the, the huskies away, or, or the sploters, right? Because the sploters are going to throw their propane tank, right? And hopefully they get zapped away by the anti-air traps. And uh, then they're going to try and attack the wall, and then the wall launcher should boot them out, and then combined with the tire trap should be some nice impact. I'm also going to put a, a defender uh, right here as well, just in case. I'll use a obliterator defender right here my obliterator like so and yeah so this should be, uh, the, the, the defender is good here in case we get any husks that are or, or the uh, uh in case any flingers throw the husks and stuff then the, the, the defender here should be able to take care of them right so i'm also going to put some anti-air traps on this back corner right here and perfect so this should honestly be the entire defense and i'm excited to see how it goes so without further ado i'm gonna start the mission and yeah, I'm just going to collect the modules. I don't think I really have to showcase how I collect the modules, if I'm being honest. It's a really boring process. You just walk, like run around and stuff. But some, some tips that I can give is that uh, they do have a little bit of an outline, right? If, if you guys have done Repair the Shelter, right? I'm assuming you have at least done it once before. They have a little outline, right? But also, um, they have a little a bit of a sound effect, too, when when they when you're near them. Right, they play like a little. Kind of sound effect. It's kind of yeah. Okay, so right here, like we got, we got a module right here. That's on the outline, and then as I as I get closer to it, just I'm I'm a bit quiet. It plays a little. Right, so yeah, keep keep it keep your eyes and ears out for, for the visual and for the and for the um, the audio cue. But yeah, so yeah, it, it's it's just an entire game of just running around looking for the outlines, hearing hearing where the modules are. And yeah, I don't think you guys need, to, need, need for me to explain it. I'm just going to cut so we get to the actual defense. Alright, well, I mean, I found a pretty much, <laughs> I found six of the modules in like a minute and a half, right? And I guess we can use Seabot. Seabot, what Seabot does, Seabot uh, scans for a minute when you activate him, right? And um, then after that minute's over, then he shows two modules, right? So because of that, I guess, uh, and because I, I already found six of them in such a short amount of time, and stuff I can use about here to find the last two without having to worry about it. But yeah, so what I like doing very little house spawn. Yeah, like it's just it's just a little bit of these guys, right? I just like using the slow field here, right? And just and I just like pretty much just, just play uh, ring around the rosy with them, right? Just just put like a nice little box around Seabot, and then I just like playing ring around the rosy with the husks that spawn whenever you have to defend him and stuff. <sighs> so yeah. Uh, usually it's it's baby husks or the right huskies that that spawn whenever the thing uh, whenever Seabot does the scan, or sometimes you're also gonna get some some nurses or some regular husks and stuff. But this guy's being smelly, so we're just gonna bull rush him out of here, right? And then we're gonna go back into our slow field, and they're gonna keep chasing me probably. So yeah, we're just gonna wrangle them up like this, and just like that, Seabot scan. Oh yeah, I, 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 and then. They despawn after a bit because they got you know you know they're getting CC'd for too long, but yeah then uh okay like I like I almost ruined everything but yeah so yeah so then you see there we we defended C up perfectly fine with no issues and he got the two modules for us and that's the last two modules that I'll be needing <laughs> and stuff so yeah uh now for real I'll be cutting when the defense starts. 
Alright, so defense about to start. Last module is installing. And yeah, so we're just going to wait till it starts. And when it starts, you want to keep an eye out for, uh, for anything that crazy might spawn. Uh, they should be spawning from like or like around this, this, this like northwestern angle from, from my uh, educated guess, right? Uh, they're probably going to be coming up from like somewhere like over there maybe or somewhere over here, right? And yeah, just, just keep an ear out for any flinger roars, right? When you hear flinger roars, that means it's going to be a flinger wave, so just keep that in mind. And yeah, uh, I got my double pot shots ready. Double pot shots are nice to cycle between killing smashers. You can also just use the discharger to kill smashers, right? Like, if I'm being honest. The discharger should be coming back to the event shop soon as well. Let's see what we got. And, okay, so we actually got a pretty easy wave. Okay, yeah, so we got a sploder wave. And the sploders, uh, they really aren't that hard to deal with. Uh... What I actually do when it comes to exploders, I like using like a weapon that has a that, that, that hits can, kind of like this, like like, like my gravedigger here, right? This can be like an SMG, right? And then I just like blowing them up, right? As they uh, as I see them, right? And yeah, so we also got some takers as well. Yeah, yeah. So this this is actually probably the easiest wave actually, because the zappers, the blasters, and the takers, they don't really care about the objective. They really only care about you, right? So that's what they're gonna be targeting. And the pitchers can be annoying because they uh, they actually do like throwing their bones at the at the oh my god yo where, where did my grenade go there oh my god yeah yeah they actually they actually do, do uh, they do like throwing their bones at the objective but they really don't do much damage at all uh, they're more of like a nuisance more than anything and something rather than a natural threat <coughs> oh yeah Mr Zapper likes to do that and stuff so yeah I can just you know kill these bloaters if they come one by one but the blasters apparently do like hitting this, which is interesting. But yeah, see all how yeah, see, like you have, see all how how the metal corrosion isn't actually taking to effect here. It's kind of crazy, right? Like the, the metal corrosion isn't taking to effect here because they don't they don't trigger it. It's only like the basic dudes that care about it. But uh, okay, so wait wait wait. So the mini boss is here. Mini boss, mini boss, mini, mini, mini boss. So the mini boss showed up, right? Uh, let me see where he is. Okay, he, here he is, right here. Yeah. So it is a husk mini boss. So we're gonna bull rush him away, slow build him like this. Uh, make sure that we explode the. Okay, well, I think the anti air trap will take care of it. Or maybe it won't, because anti air traps completely suck. Nice anti air trap, I'm glad I, I put you guys down. <laughs> but yeah, I'm gonna respawn here. Should be completely fine. And I'm gonna be blowing up this uh, exploder as well. Take care of this guy. And yeah, so mini boss. We'll rush him back into the slow field, like so. Also, try not to die. The, the, the zappers do. An insane amount of damage, by the way. It's actually kind of crazy how much damage they do. E even with my armor, it's actually insane. Uh, but yeah, we're going to be blowing that guy up. Like so. Blow that guy up over there as well. And get some health back. Uh, okay, not bull rush him because that, that did too much damage. Uh, kill this taker. Like so. And okay, well, the defender actually shot the propane tank for me. That's really awesome. But yeah, we're gonna be bull rushing the mini boss again like that. I'm probably dead again to the freaking dudes. Jesus Christ. Uh, okay, well that was my respawn. So now under okay, well the mini boss is gone. Okay, mini boss is gone. That's all that matters. I I wanted to put the banner down sooner, but yeah, I, I guess I couldn't. But yeah. Oh wait, no, no, because no, I already put it on the base, didn't I? Oh, I never did. Okay, well. <laughs> well, pretty much, okay, the, the one measly part that I forgot is that before the mission starts, you actually want to put the banner, like, on top of the base, right? So you can respawn there if you have to. Right? And, dude, like, wh what is going on? I'm just getting blown up by one, by just b random BS. Oh, this is so sad. Uh, I'm going to respawn again. Hopefully they don't go crazy. Uh, probably going to take a bit of chip damage. This is, like, the most scuffed take I've ever had recording of Repair to Shelter mission. I'm pretty much turning the easiest mission in the game. It's like it's like looking like the most hardest mission in the game. It's kind of funny. <clears throat> but yeah, if you could just uh, put that there, like that. Put the banner down as like a fail safe, and then make sure that I don't get completely popped. Okay, my my, my defender's down, but I don't really care. There's only ten seconds left. But anyways, yeah, that was the entire mission, guys. Really easy. I made it way harder than it had to be. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was it, guys. That was it for the mission. If you guys want to mimic a build like this, then feel free to do it. And if you like what you saw, be sure to use code stockings in the shop. Check out my other videos too that are a bit more uh, concise than this one was. <laughs> but yeah, hope you guys, uh, if, you, if you guys want to use my code to support me, then please do. Join, join my Discord server if you want to as well. And yeah, that's it. Hope you guys take care of yourselves. Have a good day and bye-bye.